well. Um, I remember at this ice, ice rink, you are helping some um, skater who needs double axle because um, maybe in Japan, um, in order for you to get past the uh, junior test, you need to have double axle, clean double axle. And uh, lots of skaters are really struggling to get the clean double axle. Um, and I remember that most of the skaters don't have the concept of the uh, uh, curves. Um, more comes direct uh, flat and then like a diagonal. Yeah, lots of skaters when they're pausing, they're also on a straight line. I mean, it's not as bad if you pause, if you're, if you're on a curve, because now I can see the world moving around. I've got some angular momentum. I've got some ro rotational momentum when I'm on that, uh, on that curving edge. But when I'm on a flat and paused here, I have no momentum. I got some speed momentum, but I don't have any rotational momentum at all. What's going to help get you the rotation in your jump and get all the way around on the jump is, is the, the two things. One is a, is, a, is a curving edge, one that's deep enough, and it's, it's not just the takeoff edge, but it's also this edge before you've already got the angular momentum on this edge, you just continue it there and right into the jump. So you, uh, you've got not only the turning momentum, but you've got the advantage of the deep edge. These two things are going to help. These are just two of the many things that are going to help give you more rotation in your jump. One is the leaning edge and two is the turning momentum into the jump. Continuous so, turning momentum. What's wrong with going diagonal, hold, 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 and then like a sudden um, rotations? Like what long, what's, what's wrong with that? Because you are collecting, advising skaters, don't go to diagonal, don't do the uh, sudden movement. Yeah, well, I kind of uh, just explained what's wrong with it, but uh, also when you do like um, wait and then hurry up, uh, the hurry up is we're, we're on a slippery surface here. So when we do rushed, hurried, jerky, stabby motions, very easy to lose our slip and lose our balance one way or another. So. Uh, this is another advantage of having this type of entry into the jump, a nice continuous entry that's nice and smooth and doesn't have any punchy, kicky, jerky, sudden motions. You can still do a jump with jerky, sudden motions, but your consistency will go down. Uh, if, if you're uh, not having a nice uh, momentum and smoothness into your jumps. So other question I have is, um, I saw some skaters, I saw many skaters who start pra who practice starting from standstill and then to axel. Yes, this is a very typical way of teaching and learning the axle. I see this quite often. I see st skaters starting from a standstill and then pushing and doing the axle. And I don't think that's the easiest way to learn an axle at all um, because we're accelerating. We're accelerating and then doing the jump and when we push and accelerate it takes us a while usually to establish our balance uh, when when we when we push and accelerate we, t we tend to rock and wobble so 
I don't, I, I think it's better to start already with some speed. Even when you're first learning your first axle, I don't think that's the best way to do it, frankly. And, and the other reason that that's not the best way to do it is because we, it, how we start that edge is quite important. And if you push, if you're already maybe on an edge and you somehow push, that's would be better than the way most skaters do it, which is they, they're on a flat, they push and then go on the edge. So I'm all, I'm all about how you start the edge. So you want to start the edge deep. And when you're pushing uh, from a standstill, you're kind of starting with a flat, then going deep. You're not getting the full advantage of the deep edge for the jump. Well, actually, uh, Kaz told me that I asked him how he practiced axle from standstill. And he said he goes pretty flat to start and then uh, trying to squeeze upper body. Uh, but, uh, well, you don't need to use any upper body twisting whatsoever to do an axle or to do any jump except a Lutz. You know, a Lutz, the edge goes one way and then the jump goes the other way. So it does help to get a little bit of upper body motion to help you get the rotation for a Lutz, but all the other jumps, you don't need to use any of that motion at all. I see so many skaters doing axles, practicing their axles and double axles off the uh, off the ice, you know. They, they're, they're standing with their shoes on and they do a double axle. And to do that technique off the ice, you have to put some kind of rotation. You don't have to twist shoulders against hips, but you have to start with some rotation. You don't need to do that on the ice. That's the beauty of figure skating. This is what figure skating is all about, glide and lean. If you have a glide and a lean and you jump without trying to turn, you automatically turn. And so um, I, I, I think that skaters that practice their jumps off the ice are kind of getting into bad habits of, of they're, 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 it shows a misunderstanding of what figure skating is to practice doing an axle off the ice, in my opinion. So in other words, you mean I have to start from the bed? So that's why the exercise from backward outside motions and then deep outside edge and then no upper body movement. Mm. That's a way to practice? That would be the way I would practice. It does take uh, time to learn this skating skill. And um, this, this doesn't require a lot of skill to just push and jump. There's not really much skating skill in that. And so it's gonna be diffic more difficult to do the axle. But if you take the time to practice this skating skill, this mohawk without that mohawk without pushing, without going flat, keeping a rhythm, keeping nice edges, then the axle is going to be so much easier and more beautiful.